So by this point, you have some experience playing chords, but you might be feeling like, okay, how am I supposed to switch so quickly between these things? My fingers, you know, I feel like I'm continuously building or there's some big pauses in between. How do I make the pauses less and less and less? And of course, you know, practicing helps, memorization helps because when you practice, your fingers start to get used to where you're going. Oh, I'm going here, I'm going there. And eventually, through memorization, you won't have to think about it and it'll almost be natural for your fingers to go there. But there's also another thing that you can practice to help that along. So let's say we're gonna do the G chord or whatever chord you want, it doesn't matter what chord, we just pick a chord and if you feel like a chord, if you feel like you've almost got a chord, right? And you feel like, oh, I just don't know why I can't just switch very fast to this chord yet. Well, of course, of course, patience, you know, giving yourself patience and taking the time to really, you know, work on it, of course. But also practicing something like this can help. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna play the G. Instead of building the chord one finger at a time, like we did at the beginning, because of course, Building the chord one at a time helps you put your fingers in the right place and make sure you're getting the string fingers out and all that because we kind of have to do that very slowly as a beginner. Um, once you've got that though, you're like, I know where my fingers are going. I know that this is how I make the G shape. Well, then now you have to kind of get your fingers to jump there on their own by practicing that. So instead of building, if you already know, then this is after you practice a chord enough where you're like, I know where my fingers are gonna go. My fingers are used to being here. Now, and you and, and you feel like they need, they have, they need that extra push just to just get there. You force your fingers to go on the fretboard. Instead of building each one, you go boom, G, boom, G, boom, C. You can do that. You could practice that with your without your right hand, but of course you're gonna to want to add your right hand in to make sure the notes are gonna come out and that you know it's your fingers are in the right place. So and you can always just test yourself and go boom. Oh, is it in the right place? Okay, strum it. Oh, it sounds good. Or if it, oh wait, I need to adjust my fingers and then okay, let's try that again. Let's try G again. Boom. Is that in the right spot? Let's see. And what finger's struggling? What what finger is not in the right spot? Go back then. Jump to C, okay, I'm gonna jump to C. I'm just gonna try it, you know, and if it's gonna be wrong, you know, at first, but you're getting your fingers used to jumping to the chord. So your fingers are used to being in the chord now, playing the chord, now they get, need to get used to jumping to the chord so that when you play, there is less and less pause in between and so you can more beautifully play songs and chords. So you can go, you know, go to the C, hand, like, just put your fingers in C, just have them jump right into it, you know? And then play that strum it and go, okay, all the notes are coming out. Or I jump to it and I'm hearing some of this. Let me adjust my fingers, make it come out, then jump to it again. Okay, are they coming out? Cool, yes. Or if not, adjust your fingers, strum it, jump to it again. And once you got it, now I'm jumping to G or whatever chord you want. It doesn't matter. You could pick any two chords or three jumping from chord to chord. And that's kind of how you can push your mind and your fingers to do what you really want them to do. That is also going to be a little bit of a challenge, but it is going to push you over those pauses and make it just flow beautifully into music.